Phantom Ghost. That was perfect. Spook. I feel aerodynamic. Today on Cars and Cameras, we're going to the Virginia International Raceway kart track with two retired oval dirt carts to determine which clone engine is better in the entry-level performance category. The Tillotson 212 with the Stage 1 kit or the New Harbor Freight 212 Ghost. We're going to break down our testing procedure and each engine's parts list a little later on in the video, but we're going to start things off with hot laps right now with the Ghost. All right, so we're starting things off with Charles on the Ghost from Harbor Freight. Uh, on the Phantom Racing chassis. This is like the perfect match. It's a Phantom Ghost. That was perfect. Spooky. It is cool. Here we go. Our plan is to run three laps with each cart starting with Charles on his 90s Phantom Racing chassis and record our best times. To account for the differences between the chassis, we're going to swap engines halfway through our test. At the end of the day, we're going to install a few budget performance parts to get even more out of these engines. So all in all, at the end of the day, we're hoping to learn the max RPM of each engine, the lap time of each engine, the cost, and driving impressions. What do you think, man? That was that was a wild ride. <laughs> retired retired racing chassis and probably tires from the nineties. It looks sketchy and it's fun. fun. It's so fun. You can drift <laughs> that corner. You can drift the whole corner. It's so much fun. All right. Well, I'm gonna hop on and give this engine and chassis a whirl. Ready? That was the Phantom yep. Ghost. Forty six six fifty two at sixty two hundred. RPM, so a little more than uh, what it's supposed to be uh, governed for, but cool. We're on the board. From the seat of the pants, the Ghost feels like a lot of other Peppy 212 clones. It comes with a round slide carburetor for $299, but you also have to buy a $150 accessory kit to get an exhaust system, and you'll need to furnish your own fuel tank, which can cost anywhere from $25 to over $100. This brings the grand total up to around $500, which is over $100 more than the Tillotson counterpart we're using today. This cart drives so loose, yes. and I love it. It's fun. Yeah, it's almost like you're on dirt, man. It is so loose. So I just ran a 45, 368. So Charles and I are pretty close to one another. Um, we ran out of gear, uh, So, but unfortunately that's the tallest gear we have is what's on that go-kart right now. Uh, so this comparison might just come down to whichever engine revs higher. So if the Tillotson revs higher, that means we're going to get more top speed and we're probably going to have a much quicker lap time. But we're still going to power through and find out. Next up we have the Tillotson 212 Stage 1 with the governor moved on the Epic Racing chassis. Charles is up first. I feel aerodynamic. I love this go-kart, man. It just looks so cool. It's very epic. It is. But um, <laughs> Let's get you out there. You can tell he's got a lot more RPM there. Up next is Charles testing the Tillotson on his 2013 Epic Dirt Cart with a fiberglass body. Now, remember, we will be swapping engines to account for differences in each chassis later on. 
Now our Tillotson 212 we're using today is more of a DIY option. You start with a Tillotson 212 for about $240 and install a stage one performance kit, header and racing muffler, and remove the governor. All these modifications can be done with simple tools for about an hour in your garage. And it brings the price up to about $360 for the complete package. So, Charles did pretty good on the Epic with the Tillotson 212. He ran a 47052, which is, uh, let's see, about four tenths slower than uh, what he did on the Ghost on the Phantom chassis. Now, he did just remind me that you have way more laps on the Phantom go-kart. So it could be the chassis, it could also be the Tillotson. Now we did get a little bit more RPM out of the Tillotson as well. We also had an interesting thought. What if we put a non-governed coil on the Ghost? What kind of RPM would we get? So we might experiment with that at the end of the day, but so far we're gonna keep on testing with what we have here. I'm gonna hop on the Epic with the Tillotson 212, stage one with the governor removed and keep on trucking. And then it's engine swap time. We ran into a fueling issue with the Tillotson 212. It appears that you need a pulse pump in order to run a cart that has a lot of lateral g-forces and one of our 15 degree engine plates like we were running on this cart. Basically the fuel is sloshing away from the fuel line and is having a hard time refilling the carburetor bowl. It's a cheap and easy fix, we just didn't have a spare one on hand. So we could only run the cart at eight tenths or so. I'll link one in the video description below. I will say that this specific engine had been sitting for a while before this test. We've never actually had this issue before ever on our Grand Prix at home. I love how this go-kart drives. The best way I can describe it, it feels like you're, you're a you're, you know, you just got like a, a World War II fighter jet, like running for the first time in like 40 years. And you're like, just, I don't know how to describe it, but it feels like you're in a really old janky, like jet. And near, you're just strapped in here. Near death experience. Pretty much, but it's like, it's like you're also controlling it. So turns out, John on the uh, Epic on the Tillotson ran a 46, 313. So we are pretty much a second slower than the Ghost with the Phantom. Now that could be the chassis, but I think it has to do with uh, we're draining the fuel out of the bowl. Uh, and what's probably happening is that under these hard corners without a pulse pump, we're not getting the good gravity feed action. So we're draining the bowl. So it's really interesting. We're learning a lot here. So we were thinking because we're gonna put a 22 millimeter uh, Go Power Sports carburetor round slide on the Tiltson at the end of the day, why not also throw a delimited uh, coil on the Ghost to see how many RPM it'll spin to uh, without the 6,000 RPM rev limiter. So we have that we're gonna check out at the end of the day as well. Now, whether you're looking for a pulse pump or a 22 millimeter round slide or any performance or replacement accessories, for any of these Honda clone engines or go-karts or minibikes, gopowersports.com can hook you up with the right parts at the right price with fantastic support as well. So you can check out all the parts that we're using in today's episode for this Tillotson 212 Stage 1, uh, as well as the round slide, a pulse pump if you want to go racing, fuel line, all that kind of stuff in links in the description of today's video. And of course, anytime you place an order with gopowersports.com at checkout, let them know in the order notes that the guys at Cars and Cameras sent you. So we're gonna, we're gonna get these engines switched over and hit the track again. Sweet. All right. Goodbye, Ghost. All right. Goodbye, Tillotson. Look how tight it is down there, but it should work for us. I gotta say, that's a pretty tiny uh, carburetor um, slide in there. It's yeah, a they, lot smaller than a Go Power Sports 22, yeah. but we're gonna see how they uh, stack up. Yeah, the Venturi on this is tiny, but oh yeah, WOT, don't worry. Next up, we have Charles on the Phantom on the Tillotson 212. 
We traded the color match for just America flavored. So we weren't able to get a 10 tenths driving lap out of the Tillotson 212 because of that fueling issue that we still have. Again, a pulse pump would probably fix the entire problem, uh, but we don't have a spare one on hand. So that being said, on the Tillotson 212 on the Phantom, I ran a 47.159. We're going to go into all these numbers at the end of the episode. So now it's time for Charles on the Epic. While you probably won't be able to take your retired dirt cart to your local road course track, we recommend anyone with the space and the budget to get your hands on one of these carts. Just like I said in our nine reasons to buy an old go-kart video years ago, they're so much fun if you've never been on one before and they teach you a lot about car control that applies to higher levels of racing. Charles on the Epic Ghost ran a 46, 5, oh, 36. Now I'm going to give it a go. started on a Makuni 22 swap uh, on the Tillotson uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the data before we do our head-to-head. -head. Um, so it looks like we have about 0.7 seconds between these two old carts. So even though they were made 15 years apart and they have tires of all kind of different condition, uh, we're seeing the time difference of about 0.6 to 0.7 seconds. So they're very close to one another. Uh, I'm running a little bit quicker than Charles today, so I think we'll put you in the quicker cart so it can, we can have more even race. In terms of the two engines, it went pretty much like we suspected. The Ghost is averages about one and three quarter seconds quicker than the Tillotson with the governor move and the stage one kit. We chalk this up to the fueling issue that we have, uh, the fact that we're keeping it off of valve float, uh, and also we just don't have the airflow that the uh, ghost, uh, ghost carburetor has. But we're hoping to change that 
with this 22 millimeter Go Power Sports carburetor. And we're also gonna delimit the Ghost as well uh, for our head-to-head -head race. So Charles and I are gonna get these parts on. We're gonna line up and do maybe five hot laps wheel to wheel. And we'll be able to pull fastest times off those as well. So we're gonna get some parts changed over and we're hitting the track one more time. So the GPS 22 kit comes with this nice adapter bracket for the carburetor and it's even got slotted holes for where you can clock the carburetor to level. See, we have it tilted 15 degrees this way. You would have to tilt it 15 degrees the opposite direction to get it level. And you want the carburetor level. You're gonna get an assortment of hardware. The long ones are the ones that pinch the carburetor to the, to the adapter bracket. The shorter ones go into the head. So this is the coil we just pulled off the Ghost. And this is the delimited one that we borrowed that we're going to be installing. So you notice that the one with the limiter is actually a bit chunkier. I'm guessing it has some kind of computer in here uh, that limits the RPM. So we're going to get this installed, set the coil gap, reassemble, and hit the track. So we got the coil swapped over on the Ghost. We got the uh, 22 millimeter Go Power Sports carb installed on the Tillotson. We're going to see what happens. The idea was what kind of cheap upgrades can we throw at these engines to get even lower, quicker lap times out of them? So Charles and I are gonna line up and go head to head for just a few laps, have some fun, and then draw some conclusions. Both engines saw a significant seat of the pants performance improvement with the modifications. The Ghost now revved out to 7,250 RPM, which is a huge jump over the original 6200. Now I can't say I'd recommend this modification because it felt like it ran out of power around 6500 and the engine didn't seem happy at all at and above 6500 RPM. Crazy. Out of the bottom of the carburetor? Yeah, out of this, out of that guy right there at the bottom. Yeah, the nipple right here. It was yeah, just you like can see the line. Look, look at the line. And then on the track too, it's bad. Oh gosh. All right, let's see if it'll start up. And I, I maybe. And it was I also do... kind of, it was running like doo doo too. Oh, All right. Yeah, it's it's pouring fuel now. Wow. Yeah, it's pouring fuel. Holy cow, dude. Something happened to that carburetor. We didn't touch it. I know. That thing took a poop. All right. Well, we're having an issue with the Ghost carburetor. It's just spilling fuel everywhere. Uh, so we're almost out of time today. So I'm just gonna play with the fuel cutoff and try to find that right mix. Cause we're here to have a good time uh, with the time we have left. So fire me up, please. The Tillotson, meanwhile, felt more powerful everywhere in the power band, with much snappier and precise throttle response thanks to the round slide carburetor design. We didn't have a spare pulse pump, so we were still running into our strange high RPM fueling issue with prolonged riding, so we kept the RPMs down around 6,000. We 
we expect that with the greater airflow of the 22 millimeter carburetor that we would have seen another few hundred RPMs compared to the stock carburetor. All right, so how can we draw conclusions from this day of testing? Basically, we found out that the Ghost actually performed about a second and a half better around the uh, track in terms of lap time in the ones that we recorded. It started pouring down rain, so we couldn't get a good lap time after we swapped the coil and installed the 22 millimeter carburetor. So the Ghost may be a second and a half quicker around the track, but it's about $150 more starting price than a uh, Tillotson 212 with the Stage 1 and Governor removed. And the Ghost, while it's a great engine for spec racing at a very entry level, meaning you and your friends all go out and buy 212 Ghost, stick them on your go-kart so you make sure no one's cheating, uh, the Tillotson 212 is much, much better to tailor it for your own go-kart or minibike. So the Ghost header, while it's really cool looking it's not going to fit on your mini bike whereas you buy a Tillotson 212 and then you can buy any header that's definitely going to fit your application but i think we learned a lot in today's episode i wish we could have put the 22 millimeter go power sports carburetor on the ghost just to see if there'd be any performance difference because you remember seeing how small that carburetor throat was on the ghost compared to a 22 uh to the 22 we had on the tillotson but yeah they're both great engines the tillotson 212 is just more of an all-rounder at a lower starting price you can do more with it for the the same or less money compared to the Ghost. The Ghost is also a good engine. Um, sure, it's just designed for some kind of spec series, although you need to give it to an engine sealer to seal it up. I'm really not sure how all that works, but we're uh, fans of the Tillotson here, again, because of the lower starting price. For the next 30 days on Go Power Sports website, if you buy a Stage 1 kit or something of equal or greater value, use code CCSHIRT at checkout to get a free Go Power Sports t-shirt uh, of your choice. Also, the June Rascal Raffle from Go Power Sports is looking awesome. They did a black powder coat on chrome finish this time, uh, and it's incredible. You can buy your raffle tickets for $10 to benefit teen life and... Uh, each one is different and each one is cooler than the last. So get yourself some raffle tickets before the end of the month. I'll link those in the description again. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll catch you next time. You know, you know how like the whole thing it's make it work for the video. That's what we applied for this. It was a coat hanger and it's got plenty of strength to pull a throttle cable. So in a pinch or like out on the side of a mountain or something, a coat hanger will work as a throttle linkage. Yep.